Lordy, 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 Miss Claudia. More Mel and Martell drama. And we got a reunion coming up after this. Y'all ready to talk about it? Get the music. Oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. I drop a play your life is nothing, it ain't working out. Now no debate up for discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking my dial is money, I ain't loving let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Now come on, baby, why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving, I ain't tripping, lost another spouse. I'm just a boss, it's in my blood. No, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my keys. Cause oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. Back with another video, we here to discuss Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 5 episode, girl. I forgot. I ain't gonna lie. But it's gonna be right there in the description, girl. Let's get into this episode, because I got a game to watch, okay? So the episode opens up. Mel is over there getting a uh, nice body massage, and um, the doorbell rang. Well, it's Stormy. She forgot that she told Stormy she can come on by, walk on by, and she said, that's fine. Stormy just gonna have to watch her get this dog on massage. And I was saying, well, damn. You could have had her do her next, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. I ain't judging. Anyway, so Stormy pulls up and was like, hey, girl, last time I saw you was at the little photo shoot, you know, as she's fixing Mel's product. Y'all gonna do that product placement. I ain't mad at you. But um, she was like, last time I saw you was at the shoot for the uh, business or whatever. We still doing a little editing, whatever, whatever. But she was like, girl, how was the trip? And I'm so tired of people asking about this trip. She said the trip was good, but her problem was Martell decided to tell her business after the trip by going to tell Coleslaw she had Rona. Now listen, maybe it was a need to know because him and the kids been around you or came around you and, they, and maybe he felt like she needed to know. But I don't believe that he was just being malicious by telling her business. I'm sorry. I feel like Mel is finding a reason and um and saying that, t telling this girl who he's got to be around with her kid, you know what I'm saying? After being around you, after you tested positive, I don't see nothing wrong with him saying that. Or even telling her, look, girl, you know, I just came from by mail and turns out she popped positive, whatever, whatever, just for her and her kids' safety. It's not malicious, Mel. I feel like you're reaching. I'm sorry. It's not malicious. But she claims that's what it was. But then we find out, you know, later that it wasn't that. Mel ended up calling her coleslaw by mistake. Now, now we getting somewhere. Girl, is you mad or no? Like, he, that's his baby mama. I mean, I get it. It's messed up, but God damn, are we still holding like his feet to the fire for something you've already persecuted him for? He done. He girl, he done did that. He ain't shit. You done moved on. You say you healed. What's the big deal? I'm confused. And this ain't to help up for Martel because he ain't worth a dime and he deserve everything he's gotten. You get it? But it's just like Mel, you dragging it, fat. You you dragging it. I'm sorry. Him saying you had COVID. Okay. That's the need to know if my child gonna be over there by you. And then you uh, coming out to saying, girl, when we was on the phone, you know, the trip was good while we was there. But as soon as we get back, he on the same old stuff because he done called me cold salt on mistake. It happens. I mean, I, I just don't get why that's such a big deal. But um, she said uh, um, she's done with Martel. She said every time she tried to give him a little inch, he run a mile. Um... Again, her saying he's sharing her business, I think that's a stretch. That's just me. Uh, Stormy asked her about Sheree. She was like, well, girl, the blogs. The blogs is talking, fat. They wants to know, oh, did you know about Sheree? And she said, you know, I wasn't even going to say nothing. You know, TMZ, everybody asking me what's up. And it ain't on account of Martell because TMZ ain't no damn thing about no damn Martell. It was the Sheree part. But um, TMZ and all these other blogs and sites is asking her, you know, about the, how she feel about him and Sheree being together. And she said she has nothing bad to say about Sheree. Sheree is a beautiful woman, and she is. And, you know, she want, people want her to say something bad about her, and she's not going to do that. Kudos to you, Mel, because Sheree ain't got nothing to do with Martell cheating ass, and Sheree is a beautiful woman. It just is what it is, and Sheree probably will whip your ass if you say something crazy. You get it? Um, but I like Sheree, so I'm glad you didn't try to say nothing bad about Sheree, because it ain't Sheree's problem that, you know, all of that went awry the way it did. But um, she says, Mel, that uh, this ain't the first woman she done seen him with. She done seen him with the baby mama, other women, and all of that, you know, why is people making a big deal? Because it's news. You know, it really was on Sheree because Sheree was just leaving that deadbeat of a bum who she found down there at the prison. You know what I'm saying? So that's really why the people was trying to figure it out. It, wasn't, it ain't had nothing to do with Martell. I think a lot of people was learning who Martell was through him dating Sheree, to be completely honest. That's just my opinion. 
But Stormy is over there uh, asking her if she gonna go down there to the uh, event that Matt Martell's having to right the wrong that he did. And uh, his uncle, I forget his name, with his fine ass, was down there ready to pop him upside the head. So, you know, Stormy was like, oh, is you going to the event? She said, well, you know, girl, I need to protect my energy for me and my children. And with these recent events that Martell has done, I feel like I may, you know, I don't have an urge or a desire to go. Mel... <laughs> I, Mel's whole thing is, if I go, it's going to mess with my energy, and I don't, I need people to, and I'm paraphrasing, I, what I got from it was, she need people to know that, you know, it, she's not really bothered. Honestly, showing support will show that you're not bothered. That's just my opinion. But, again, she may or may not say that. I'm not sure. But she says she wants to keep her energy good for the kids, so she's going to sit this one out. Well, it is what it is. Ain't nobody worried about more telling that goddamn wine. Let's move on. All right, so we back. Martel got Chris Fletcher down there at the new event that he's doing. Well, they picked a venue for the wine uh, launch. And it's actually a really nice venue. It's actually better than the vintage one that we saw last week. But him and Chris Fletcher are walking around. And we meet Mel's, not Mel's, Martel's cousin who uh, actually uh, coordinated this one. See, Melanica did the one down there in Atlanta where all she did was rent an Airbnb. And oh, uh, have a couple people sit around a dinner table. But see, with this one here, the cousin did this one. And when I say cousin Martel, you did a damn good job. The venue is everything, Fat. Loving it. Oh, yeah. That's nice. That's nice. But you know, Martel said he know multiple people. It ain't always about Melanica. But if you ask me, your cousin need to be the new Melanica. Because your cousin event shattered Melanica's all the ones I've seen. Even with her having you down there at a uh, rental spot. Uh, looking like it's in a strip mall for you to read a book to them damn churn. Say what I said. I don't care what nobody said. You need to keep Cousin Martel on, on the board. But anyway, um, he invited Destiny and, and Chris so they can help him coordinate this event a little bit better so he can find out uh, or not find out so that he can make sure uh, things don't go awry like his cousin ready to bop him upside his big milk dud head if you get it. So, um... Yeah, he got them there just to make sure everything's good. Uh, Destiny brings up his new boo. She was like, so um, the blogs is talking. We've heard you had a new boo. But see, Martel don't want to talk about it. And like she said, if this is a positive event in your life, what's the problem? Why wouldn't you want to talk about your new boo? Your event is positive. Your new boo is positive. Why is you keeping her under hush? We already seen the tea. We already know. Stop it, Martel. But anyway, he don't want to talk about her. He said he want to do, you know, talk about the, the event or whatever. Well, you better talk about it and make sure you mention your grandmother because your uncle going to bop you upside your head, like I said. But anyway, um, Destiny decides to show her um video of Mel, I guess, having an interview because she asked what he thought Mel thought about it. And he said he don't know. He really don't care. You know, he don't really uh disclose all of his relationships with Mel, well, we see the interview with Mel over there saying, um, you know, I don't really care. This ain't the first guy that I've seen him with. Um, I've seen him with pics of other women before. Um, and basically kind of shading him. Or I guess that's what Martel took from it. And Martel was like, wait a minute. Um, how she figured she gonna talk about me when she done had my kids around all these different people, people I've never met. Um, I didn't even have Sheree around, around my kids, although I think she's a a great woman. I personally didn't want to in introduce my kids right off off the bat. I wanted to wait a while. He was like, so I don't feel like it's right. Um, Destiny asked a good question. She was like, well, did you tell Sheree, not Sheree, uh, Mel about, you know, this girl before the blogs? And he said, no, I didn't. I don't have to tell her nothing. That's just what it is. What I do is my business. Um, Martel, I get it. But when it's a, a high profile issue like uh, Sheree, I think you could have told her. But then again, I ain't gonna lie. He don't have to. They, he don't owe that to her. Unless he about to bring her around them kids. I ain't gonna lie. I, I got a side with Motel on this one. He don't have to tell her that. I mean, it would have been a nicety, but it's not a necessity if you get it. Let's move on, girl. All right, so now we back. Tisha is in there getting ready for the event, putting her clothes, laying her clothes out on the bed like tomorrow's the first day of school. And in comes Marso uh, asking her what the hell is she doing. Well, she wants to coordinate. She want to dress alike. You know how y'all used to do back in middle school? You know, dress alike so everybody can know y'all together, had the same tennis shoes and whatnot. She want to dress alike. Marso ain't with that. Marso was like, girl, look... It is what it is. We ain't got to do all that. She was like, I should have had Maurice come over here and pick out your clothes. I ain't going to lie. Maurice do know how to dress better than Martel. But 
I mean, I'm going to tell my soul, but he ain't here for all that. He's there to spill the tea, as we about to see. So now, um... She asked him if he's looking forward to the event, how you think the fit going to go. He was like, his most thing that he's looking forward to is Martel's outfit. Because last time he had that fur fox on his, or no, not fur, faux fox on his shoulder. He's looking for him to have a walrus. He's probably going to have a damn gorilla, if you ask me. Uh, Tisha asked him if he think the event's going to go well. He said he feel like it's going to go well. Um, he said, but he feels like the girls are going to be messy. Y'all, one of y'all going to pull somebody aside and have a woman to woman. And then it's going to go left. Tisha don't think so. She said, I don't think that's true because me and Stormy doing okay. No, Stormy and Destiny doing okay. Me and Mel are cordial. Girl, you just pitched the fit because the girl was coming to see you. Um, also, girl. Shut up. Anyway, um... She feels like everybody is good. She even asked him if uh, Kimmy's going to come. He said when he talked to Maurice, Kimmy seems in good spirits. He feels like everybody is going to be there. But at the end of the day, y'all is going to be messy. You know that. As we seen in the doggone preview, they're going to be messy. That's what the girls do. That's just how it rolls. But anyway... So now he brings up the interview that um, Mel had and was like, you know, Mel did the interview saying she's unbothered. Uh, and then Tisha brings up the fact that Mel likes to act like she's unbothered. But the fact of the matter is she be bothered. She's not going to show her true feelings. Well, Mar Mar not Martel. Why I keep wanting to say Martel? Marceau brings up a very good point. He said people feels like being unbothered is a, is a super strength or a superpower. And it's not. He basically made sense. He says people who are unbothered are typically bothered. People who don't care, care. You know what I mean? People who put the strength in in in, in the the dog on anything into saying you are unbothered means you are bothered. Because if you were unbothered, you wouldn't even comment on it. Makes all the sense in the world to me. I'm gonna stop you when you start lying. I'm just saying it makes sense. I'm, it makes sense to me, and I do believe that Mel does not show her true feelings because for her to bring up this whole thing of oh yeah, um, I'm we taking a step back because he she told no Martel told her my personal business girl he told her you had COVID he had to tell her that if he going to get her child, I believe them Mel I'm on their side I feel like you do care that's why you say you don't care I'm sorry. But, you know, Marceau's whole thing is, look, after being with somebody with 12, for 12 years and having four kids, there is a level of bother, bothersome in there. And that's just human nature. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why people just be trying to make it out like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, a person can really not give a shit and move on after 12 years and four kids. All 12 years. I was about to say 11 years <laughs> and four kids. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. No, it happens. It is what it is. Uh, but then he said something that was very interesting. He said, you know, it was all fine with the leveling down with Martel. And we know leveling down is coleslaw in the regular bumps down there in the streets of Huntsville. You know, them the country bumpkins nobody ain't worried about. Oh, but when you bring it up to Miss uh, Sheree Whitfield, you know, she by Sheree or uh, Chateau Sheree, that's big. He said she might be okay with him leveling down, but it's the level up that's going to, you get it? I, he makes sense. I know Mel got her fans and everybody feel like that's a lie because Mel could never, she could never, she's y'all fave, she, she's perfect, blah, 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 blah. Y'all not about to tell me that didn't bother her because I know one thing for me, it would bother me. If my ex right now went out and got him a Sheree Whitfield, yeah, I'm going to be bothered by that. I might not say it, but I'm going to be bothered. Every woman... Listen, what we know, especially with black women, when we be a good woman to a man, by the time they leave us, they typically level down. But the level up, that's the one that gets you. And we know that. And that's human nature all over the world. Like, I don't understand. But, um, you know, she's acting like it's not a big deal. But I'm with uh, Marceau. Yeah, it's a deal. It may not be a big one, but it's a deal. Let's move on. All right, so it's the day of the event. Um, everybody's showing up. Uncle Sam, his other uncle, everybody there. Uh, Martel said he wants the night to be perfect. Um, he's just he's searching and urging for perfection. He's planning more for this one than he ever did the last one. He just wants everything to go well. Tisha, Destiny, Stormy, and Tiff show up, and they all get up in their group and start their little you know messy stuff, which I'm here for. Tisha uh, says that actually the venue Martel chose is perfect. It's probably the best place you can see the whole city of Huntsville. She was like, the night is actually really, really good. 
uh martel get cousin martel cousin hope whatever we want to call her because i forgot her name we need her to take the, the place of melanica because all melanica did was reserve a goddamn airbnb okay we need cousin hope on the job you get it? Oh, uh, now that you with Sheree, you can stop allegedly jamming up Melanica on the side and just let your cousin do all your events from now on. Cause this is this is given, right? Yeah, let let your cousin do it. She's better than Melanica, and plus Melanica ain't got nothing but drama with, with her anyway. If you ask me, but that's only if you ask me. But the girls are wondering if uh, Mel's gonna show up, and they was like, I don't know. She seemed to be okay, and she seemed to be in good spirits. And they also asked if Sheree's gonna show up. Well, on the flip side, the guys are talking and it was like, oh, heard about your new boo. Is she going to be here? Martel said no because he felt like, you know, they had a conversation and he felt like if she came, it was going to be about their relationship and not about the event. So they both came to an agreement that he didn't want to um have her come down. Now. He just wanted to focus on the wine and making sure Uncle Sam don't beat his ass. Makes sense to me. Sound about right. So the girls are over there conversating and I already said that. So the girls are uh, still talking and Tiffany, awkwardly enough, as she always do, brings up, oh, um, I know Mel came by the thing and said that you invited her over or she came or she invited you over or whatever. Y'all had a conversation. Are y'all good? And um, who it was at Destiny was like, well, yeah, we, we called you like we straight. We agree to disagree. Just leave it at that. And everybody's just making faces. She was like, don't overthink it. It just is what it is. And then you know how Tiff is. She was like, well, you know, well, I was just asking because, um, she was like, so, you know, I was just asking because, um, yeah, you know, I know how y'all was at the little dinner party or whatever. I didn't know if y'all were faking it or not. Uh, you know, it, like she was getting on your nerves and Destiny flat out said, girl, didn't nobody get on my nerves that night, but your ass. And everybody's like, oh, well, what did Tiff do? Will she always do be messy and don't read the room? I'm with Destiny on that one. Tiffany, you is messy. And you bring up shit at unopportune times that nobody ain't even talking about. For instance, we at the wine event. We trying to get the tea on Sheree and Martel. And here you go asking about her and uh, Mel. This ain't about that, fat. This ain't about that. We are over here trying to figure out the other tea. That tea is dead in the water. But again, you don't read the room. Read the room I'm sorry. As she said. And you got on her nerves. As you probably are getting on her nerves in this moment. I'm with you on it. On the flip side, the guys are still talking. Chris pulled my so aside and said he he was getting a lot of heat because you went told your wife you was with me the whole time down there in the streets of Atlanta when it, when it turns out that was a lie because I was with my wife half of the day. But see, you went told, uh, what's her name, Tisha, that you was with me and that was a lie. So you put me in a position where I have to lie. Um... Marceau was like, well, I'm not really, um, you know, I just feel like, you know, you could have been unbiased with your answers. Marceau, Marceau's whole thing is he only said that because he feel like it's none of our business. And you are correct. What I want to know is, did you tell your wife the truth? Who was the friend you was with, Marceau? You've been getting away real good, real, real good. You've been getting away with this bull. Now it's time to pay the piper and you around here acting crazy. Who was you with? And did you tell Tisha? We gonna find out on the doggone reunion. But I want to know, did you tell her who exactly you was with? And Carlos King, you better be asking her who the hell he was with. Because we done already found out from Chris Fletcher and uh, agreed upon by Marceau that he wasn't with him all day. Talking about you was only saying that because she was pressing you. Listen, you could have you could have said whatever you said on the dog on camera because we gonna find out regardless. You get it? Uh, but you had better had a sidebar with your wife because that's who matters. And if you had not went ahead and um uh, fixed that, you did. I'm sorry. No, I ain't gonna think you did because she ain't even her man. I'm just saying. But um. His whole thing is he should have been better at his tone and he should have been uh, unbiased in his answers. The man was telling the truth. What you want him to do? You wanted him to lie. Mm-hmm. You get it? Because I do. That man said, you're not about to put me and my wife up in there. Uh-uh. You said what you said, but um, that wasn't what it was. Anyway, so the girls are asking if Sheree coming. I already said that. They said they don't know because Martel said that she ain't coming because he wanted to be about him. And instead of the, him in the event, I'm sorry, instead of the drama with is they together, what they doing, blah, 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 blah. 
So he's saying that he prepared for this event. Um, he gets up there to get this, give this speech. He starts to fumble a little bit, but actually he did a wonderful job. And I really feel like Cousin Hope helped you with this too. Cousin Hope needs to be hired. She helped you with this because see, Melanika wouldn't have had you do this. But he went up there and gave a speech and introduced his family, Uncle Sam and Uncle whoever else it was. And another uncle who said, I'm not coming up there to be in that circus of BS. And he unveiled the photo of his grandmother and gave a wonderful speech about his grandmother. I am like, okay, Martel, I'm proud of you. For the first time, like I say, I'm proud of you. And I know we all hate Martel. I don't hate him. I know we all say he, you know, he ain't shit because he ain't. But what I will say this is, um, he said it too. He said he's proud that he has something to leave on to his children. That's big. You know, most of us on the black hand side, most of us don't have nothing to leave our churn. So the fact that Martel got something to leave his churn, I think it's commendable. Shout out to Martel in the wine. I forgot the name of the wine. Agnes, Annelise, whatever it is. Um, shout out to the wine. They're going to carry it down there in black. That's all that matters. He want everybody to love the doggone wine. I like the speech. He said he, he get, he's, what did he say? I don't know how he said it in Swahili, but it translates to he wanted it to be loved by all. Shout out to you, Martel. I might get a bottle with that with some black. Just to support, just for the children. You get it? Um, now, moving on. Uh, Kimmy is over there, and Destiny is talking to her. I was like, girl, I hadn't seen you since the party. You know, you're always so strong, but you seem so weak in that moment, girl. Like, what was going on? I wanted to pull you aside afterwards, but I gave you a space. So, Kimmy opens up about the cancer thing and said it was on that day she had just found a lump. Right? She said, I found two lumps that day. My head was all over the place. I couldn't make heads or tails what was going on. So that's why I was aloof really on that day. But then she goes on to say she had her testing um, and that it tests positive for breast cancer. She found two lumps. Uh, Destiny asked her if it's in the earlier stage. She said it is. They caught it in the early stage or earlier stage. And um, she's basically going through chemo at the moment. Destiny gets up and immediately hugs her. I'm not going to lie. At first, it kind of didn't sit right with me that, um, you know, uh, not Destiny, Stormy got up and hugged her. But it kind of didn't sit right to me that Destiny was just sitting there like, and I'm just sitting here like, girl, what is you doing? Like, you don't, that doesn't move you to anything, especially as a woman. Like, what? But um, it turns out that, you know, after Destiny sat down, not Destiny, after Stormy sat down, I'm sorry, uh, Stormy, Destiny told her, hey, if you need anything, I know you're not going to ask, but I'm here for you, girl. I am here for you. And, you know, that's something that, Kimmy had to acknowledge. Kimmy was like, you know, everybody tells me that. And I'm saying Kimmy because that's everybody's experience with you. Um, she's had her husband Maurice there to really be her rock and really be her everything. She says she normally, you know, has her days, but he's been there like, you know, like she said, Stormy husband be driving her around. But that's because Stormy husband ain't got no job. Uh, but in this situation, that's a little different because your man is just there to support you. Stormy's husband is there to make sure she don't leave him for somebody with a little bit more pennies than he do. And I think she should, but I don't know. I don't know them people marriage anyway. But uh, she said, you know, people say that and she, she embraces that. But, you know, that's just her nature and who she is. Now, speaking of her nature, on the flip side, Marcel's over there speaking to her son and asking him how he's dealing with the stuff that's going on with his mama. And he said he's terrified. He's scared. He's scared because as a man, really, there's nothing he can't do or nothing he can do about it. And he can't even show that he's scared because as a man, you just don't get to do that. I hate that narrative. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. A man should be able to show his feelings just as well as a woman. Period. If a man is scared, he should be able to comfortably say that. And I think that that situation and that conversation is going to have to happen in the male population first before it comes over to the female population. Because, see, a lot of men will say, oh, the reason we can't show our emotions is because women will, or, or, will look at us funny or women. And we will. But ultimately, the shaming comes from the ones that are like you more than it does from us. That's just the guy down the street. From my experience, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not a man. But he said, you know, he, he's scared. He said he want to be able to do more for her, but he don't know where to start because he don't know what the hell's going on. Kimmy, again, on the flip side, is telling them it's in the early stage. We already talked about that and how Marceau has, Maurice, I'm sorry, has been there for her. Now, Marte, Marceau is still having that conversation. And uh, he asked, uh, I forget her son's name, but he asked him, he was like, so, you know, like, 
how how have things been? He said, well, you know, some days is good. He's like, and some things, some days I don't get nothing out of them. And it's it's bothering me because I don't know what to do. I can't really make tails ahead of it, heads or tails of it. He said he never saw his mama cry till she got on the doggone show. The first time he saw her cry was at the wedding. And then the second time was on the show. That was the two times in his entire upbringing that he seen his mama cry. He said prior to Maurice, she never cried. She never showed emotion. That wasn't nothing they did. They just didn't do that. That's just not what they did. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Because, you know, typically with women and their sons, they typically really mushy because you know how women are with their sons, especially black women. But that was very telling that he was saying that. You know what I mean? Like, wow, like this is the first time I, uh, I'm ever seeing this. It told me two things. Number one, um, there's a lot of vulnerability that Maurice is providing to Kimmy for her to be able to show that emotion, emotion that was absent before. And number two, this is the detriment that we create or this is the, the bad things that we put our kids in when we don't express ourselves or allow our children to express ourselves because now he's hurting, he's balling up, and he can't even show that. Like he said, if I were to really show how I really felt, I wouldn't be able to come to work. Like, I'm really tore up, and I can't even really show it. My mama is, is messed up. I've never seen her this messed up. I've never seen her so hurt. I've never seen her cry until recently, and it's... It's crazy to him. It's asinine to him because that's not the mom he's used to. My heart goes out to you. It really does. It it really does. And um and to the black men in the community because y'all don't want to show y'all emotions and that bothers me. Then y'all want to jump up and want to bop somebody upside the head. It just doesn't make sense. But Maurice said he's talked to people young, old, you know, all over. Nobody knows how to deal with their emotions because we don't have these conversations. These conversations are why they need to be had. Um... Anyway, so he says he's going to check up on on her son. What is that little boy name? I forgot the little boy name. But anyway, he's going to check on him because he knows he's not going to do it, you know, or say he needs anything. So he's going to take his, make it his priority to check on him. He said, just like you're going through this with your mama, I'm going through this with a sister, with my brother, with, you know, just in a different realm, basically. So I thought that was a good conversation. And I thought it was wonderful that Marceau checked on him. I mean, he got to do something to deflect from the fact that you wasn't with Chris Fletcher all day. More so, we got questions. We got questions, Tisha. You know this going to come up at the doggone reunion, fact. I hope you ready. Let's move on. All right, so we at the end of this bullshit or whatever, and here comes the drama. You know they always leave it off on drama. The next, uh, the, not the next, the doggone reunion going to be next week or the next episode, girl. I can't wait because this is a lot to unpack. So Martel pulls up there to Mel House, and um, he said he, uh, she didn't show up, you know, to the thing. He said he, but he got there for that. He want to come in there and talk about the kids. One about the moving of the grade up, and the other one got something else going on. I can't remember. He knocks on the door. Mel comes to the door with the bag. Was like, here you go, Martel. You want the bag? You want the bag? And he was just like, I mean, I ain't come over here for a bag. I actually came over here to talk to you. She was like, well, about what? He was like, well, I want to talk about the kids, about this one moving up and this one having this and that and the third. She don't want to talk about that. She don't want to talk about that. And she was like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. We could just talk outside. So he was like, what you mean talk outside? Like, girl, you better let me in, girl. What you talking about? She says he's crossing a boundary. And now he's crossing the boundary. Mel, I need all you and your fans to ask me how this ain't petty. Now he's crossing the boundary. I'm with Martel on this one. Martel was like, wait a minute. What you mean, girl? Let me in there. We, we trying to have a conversation. Martel, you've never come into my home. I mean, you came on a back patio. Unbothered. Is that what unbothered looks like? Because if so, I, I don't want to be unbothered. Then Martel was like, but girl, you done came to my house. We just came from Florida. What did I say? When he said we just came from Florida, it reminded me of what I've been saying these past two to three episodes. Inviting him to Florida. If you really feel like you are past it and you ready to move on and there's no chance, inviting him to Florida was going to be your a bad thing to do. And what did you do? Inviting him to Florida. Now, he's not even talking about wanting to be back with you. I don't know what the conversations are behind the scenes. That ain't my problem. But what he's talking about is we've been able to coexist in, in the same space before. I done been on your back patio. We just came down here from florida now all of a sudden it's a problem i can't come into the crib you done came into my crib but i can't come into yours it makes no sense make it make sense i'm with him make it make sense just coincidentally this is all happening right after we find out he's with uh chateau sheree 
We done found out he done been down there to the chateau. Now all of a sudden, uh, it's a different, you know, tune now, Mel. You know, you blaming it on him telling that girl that she that he had COVID or you had COVID. Talking about that's your medical business and all that. And I get it. If she put it online, she was dirty for that too. She probably was just being petty because she wanted her man that didn't want her. So I get that part. But it was a necessity for him to tell her that. Period. I don't care what nobody says. Like he said, I I you you I had just left the the dog on trip from Florida with you, and the very next day you pop positive for the Rona. That was something I needed to tell her because I'm picking up and dropping off my kid. Makes all the sense in the world. And anybody out there who says it doesn't, you full of shit and you lying. You straight up lying. If I knew that my ex had my kids or he's coming to pick up my kids and he's coming from anywhere, not even just with her, anywhere where somebody had tested positive for the Rona, especially during the time when it was a big deal, yes, that is something I need to know because I may not allow my kids to come over there because you know what? My kid might get sick. But Mel don't see it like that. She said, no, that's not the case. Um, That was just telling my personal medical business. Girl, now, Coleslaw, you ain't had no, no business going out there telling the girl business on social media. That was none of social media's business. But I'm pretty sure I haven't seen the post. It was probably on some petty stuff about, you know, her possibly giving her child COVID or something. You know, something stupid and dumb and ugly. Something that a side bitch would do. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately... Uh, you didn't have that to do. Now, Mel's want to hold uh, Martell accountable because she said it was his fault. Uh, Martell's whole thing is you can't hold me accountable for somebody else's stuff. I mean, that's just on the period. Um, that ain't my problem. If she went down there and said what she said, um, it is your problem and it ain't. It ain't because y'all ain't together and it is because you told her, but you had to tell her. So I ain't even mad at it. But um, anyway, Martell gets in his car and pulls off. He was like, he ain't dealing with this shit. That's disrespectful. But then he ends up calling her and look at Mel. Why are you calling me, Martell? Why are you calling me, Martell? Mel, did you, um, with this whole act you about to put on, were, is this so that you could, uh, ter, uh so, so that Sheree could see it and, and leave him alone? Because that's what it's giving. I'm sorry. That's what it's giving. It's giving, this is so that Sheree can see it and, and be like, oh no, you still messing with your wife. Let me leave you alone. It was giving very much that, but let's go into it. So, um, she was like, why are you calling me Martel? Martel was like, look, man, I'm calling you because I needed to talk about these kids. And I don't understand why you flipping now when we just was together. You know what I mean? In, in the same space recently like what's the problem what's the big deal martel you've never come into my house and you never um will come into my house martel you would never come into my house and martel was like girl you sound crazy you sound crazy the fact that you sitting up here saying that i can't come into your house all of a sudden we just came off a damn family vacation you sound stupid as hell and Ma and mel you do you sound stupid as hell. Like I said, you shouldn't have invited his ass from the beginning. I said it, I said it, I said it. Because irregardless, and I know that's not a real word, irregardless to the fact that you had moved on, and this ain't this conversation ain't even centered around until she brings it up, around y'all wanting to get back together or nothing, it blurs the lines. You cannot go on a vacation with a man and then and live in the same quarters. It ain't like he got a separate Airbnb. Y'all in the same quarters and then decide once he say something or do something that piss you off, oh, you're crossing boundaries now. That's wrong. That's wrong. And you shouldn't have damn invited him. You should have went on that trip by yourself, you and your kids, and left it at that. Period. You just should have. I, I don't care. But she says the COVID drama after all of that and him telling that girl and that girl getting on, 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 on social media was triggering. Well, what are triggers? Triggers are responses that happen to say things that we are still bothered by. So that means that if it was triggering that she put that online, you were still bothered, Miss Unbothered. Everything Marceau was saying is ringing more and more true. You were definitely still bothered. You acting like you wouldn't and you is because you're triggered. Mel, it's the it's that right there for me. That's the part I don't like about Mel because Mel, I, I will give you props and, and raise you up when you doing right. But when you wrong, I'm not like one of the stands. I'm going to tell you you're down bad and you're down bad for that. I'm sorry. You holding this man accountable for what? I mean, 
And then speaking of accountability, she was like, because this is the things I'm going to hold you accountable for, just like I held you accountable in our marriage and you went off and cheated. Oh, it all comes out, girl. You still buy the Stop telling people you unbothered. You buy it. That's why you ain't come to the event. That's why um you out there acting a fool. It just is what it is. But anyway, Mel, Martel comes back anyway. And he's, you know, sitting outside in the car. And he basically telling her, you down bad. And you is. I'm sorry. You down bad. You, you you didn't have to do that. And he shouldn't be held responsible for somebody else's actions. And he said he had to tell her because he was just around her after she got pop positive. It makes sense. I'm sorry. It, it just does. Um, He says that... um. Then she goes into the whole accountability thing of you not being accountable during the marriage and cheating and all of that and all of that. And I'm just saying, girl. And Martel, and when she when she felt like that wasn't working, then she goes to and Martel. Anyway, um, speaking of that, wasn't you just talking to me last Monday, telling me how you wanted to be back with me? Mel, what are you doing? You look desperate. You look desperate. I'm sorry. Even if it's true, you look desperate. Why is it coming out at Mad D? Why? And I know you mentioned it before, but see, this is too opportune for it to come out now after we just found out he's down there at the chateau. Didn't you um just hit me up saying you still want to be with me? Of course he's going to deny it, and I believe he probably did. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. He, who knows? No more tell he probably did. But then he throws a low blow and say, you done been with too many men for me to ever want you back. <gasps> Martell. Now I'm with Mel on this one. Now you're looking insecure. You must, I know your penis is small. I know it. I know it. Cause I ain't never seen no bulge in none of your shorts and you too big to not have a bulge or to have a bulge everywhere. But them, I know you got a small penis. Cause typically men who worry about body counts, they were, they worry that they won't be able to compete. If you get it, it was a low blow, but he said she done been with too many men. He don't want her. I don't believe you Martel, but she said he's a, he's an insecure boy. I'm with you on that. And um, she was like, I'm not dealing with this. And she said she's walking away. She's not dealing with this. Um, The truth is she's ready to move on. And that's what's bothering him. She's, she's, you know, she's just ready to move on. Um, And the joke is on him, allegedly. He's on a flip side saying, you want to walk away when the truth starts to come out. I believe you, Martel. Oh, I saw on the doggone preview that Destiny was about to spill some real teas on you. For the reunion, and um, Maurice, hurry up and say, "Don't do that, don't do that." So there is tease. We gonna get on um mail, but anyway, let me end this. That's the end of that episode. But let's talk about this reunion coming up, fat. Oh, uh, what you been doing down there in the Huntsville streets? Where Maurice had to say, "Don't do that." And Maurice, is y'all having sex parties down there at the place of business? What is going on, Tisha? Is what y'all? Backstabbing ass cousin saying true was Maurice Marceau had a picture of a naked woman in the phone. Girl, this is gonna be a lot. I can't wait to review these. I might do a live because this is gonna be big. This is gonna be big. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. I'm about to get out of here. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and everywhere else. You get it. They all voodoo doll TV. And yeah, I'll see you hoes later. Bye. Mr. Carroll, how you give the voodoo dog time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo dog is? The nigga you just had up here.